Hi, my name is Sean Anderson. I'm going to tell you about some of the work we've been doing in Southern Louisiana for the last 15 years. I have a lot of partners in this work. Um, Dr. John Lambrinos from Oregon State and Dr. Tom Huggins from UCLA, chief among them, and also legions and legions of students from my campus and campuses across the country. I've been bringing students to Southern Louisiana for the last um, many years, starting in 2007. Um, th these are all service learning classes where we do work for the community and embed ourselves in the community. Um, we do food, work on food systems, we rebuild homes, all kinds of great stuff. Our chief partner here, our most consistent partner though over the years has been Woodlands Conservancy and Katie Braystead. I first met Katie in 2007 when she needed some help. I came on over and she said, we need some help. I need to figure out how what our plants are doing. And so I uh, went to a restaurant with my students and I designed a quick uh, monitoring plan. The next day we came out and started monitoring and we've been monitoring Woodlands Trail and Conservancy properties ever since. This work is based around English Turn. We began in, in the Woodlands Trail property and then in recent years have moved over to the Delacro property. We have two main goals, monitor the restoration performance, particularly in the context of invaders and in terms of natives, and then also to support other restoration and conservation efforts that the Conservancy is involved with. This is what our site, this is what uh, Woodlands Trail looked like before Katrina hit, closed canopy, bottomland hardwood forest uh, after Katrina, Huge problems. Canopy removed, lots of invaders spread. Most problematic invader is Chinese tallow, very quick growing tree. You see on the right, my student is holding an individual that germinated and started growing this year. On the left, my student is holding an individual that had started growing the previous year, and this is a five meter tall individual. We target all the tree species, but in particular, we're most worried about these three invaders, Chinese tallow, China berry, Chinese privet. Our survey work forms the baseline with which we can then assess the efficacy of the restoration efforts. Those control efforts to control the invaders, introduce natives, began in 2009. Most of our vegetation work uses permanent, a mix of permanent plots and band transects. And we uh, began doing this at the new Delacro property starting in 2014. We learned a few things. I want to break them down into three different areas. One, the fact that I want to argue that universities can be significant partners, even if we're on a different coast. Restoration targets are hard to nail down in Southern Louisiana. And then um, our control efforts, our restoration efforts are necessary and they are working, but they are complicated. Okay, so we can be significant partners. We've contributed almost $600,000 in equivalent uh, person time uh, if we were needed to be paid for our work. Um, and that's from 2007 to 2019. We did not do any work in 2020 because of the pandemic. Our last year, we have data from 2019, we contributed 1,265 person hours in terms of our surveying. Next, as academic researchers, we can bring a lot to the table. In particular, we can bring different techniques, cutting edge technology, et cetera. In this case, we're using some of our robots, our flying drones, to uh, measure the height of trees by flying up to the top of the trees. Here, we're comparing our uh, cheap, traditional, rapid assessment methodologies, our visual estimate of height, to the actual height as measured by the flying robot. What we found on the x-axis here is the robot's estimate of the tree height. Here is our human estimate of the tree height. Basically, we are equivalent. So we're getting the same amount of data, but we're doing it much faster, much quicker. Lastly, we can bring our academic prowess to understanding the historic dynamics of these systems. So this is a map from 1803. Here we can see this is a wooded area. So the woodlands existed here in 1803. By 1892, they were either gone or at least heavily reduced. And by 1935, really tweaked as we, in, as we now have these series of drainage canals that are radically changing the hydrology, pulling water off the land. Next, our restoration targets really are equivocal here in coastal Louisiana. Here's our best flora that we use to help guide our restorations. This, this was a paper published in 2002, surveys done in the 1990s. White and Skojak went to seven different bottomland hardwood sites around our region, counted all the trees there and did all the flora. Unfortunately, since they published their paper, 40% of these sites are no longer bottomland hardwood forests. They've been destroyed. Next, if we look at the composition in there, forest fragments really are seeming to differ from one another. Here are the seven that they surveyed. Here's the average score. This is importance value. This is essentially relative abundance of these different species. Uh, live oak, hackberry, red maple, ashes, and cypress. What we see is our Delacro property here has widely different tree species than these other sites. So either we have many fewer of these particular species, or in the case of things like cypress, many more of these species than 
um, existed. So what is our guide? It's hard to know what our target should be. It's also important to note that these systems are still feeling the brunt of Katrina. So in this case, I recorded this video in 2018, 13 years after Katrina hit, but we're still seeing trees dying because of the modifications from Katrina. So this red maple here is leaning at 45 degrees and falling onto these other trees. So it's dying and getting ready to take out some of the canopy even 13 years later. Finally, how are we doing controlling invaders? Is our restoration working? The answer is yes. First and foremost, where we have a lot of invaders, we have degraded forest health. Where we have lots of invaders, we have very few vertebrates with the exception of snakes. Snakes seem to deal fine with that. Let's see what happens when we try to treat these sites. So we have uh, sites that were treated in 2009 and sites that were treated in 2013. As soon as we treat them, this is biomass, this graph here. As soon as we treat them, boom, the biomass drops down after 2009. Or in the case of the 2013 treatments, boom, drops down after 2013. But it's not just that simple. So in the wake of these treatments, what we see, we see a flush of babies being born. We see a lot of new seedlings coming up. So in the case of 2009, once we do the treatment, 2010, boom, there's a flush of babies. The 2013 treatment, boom, afterwards, a flush of babies coming up. This control effort does benefit natives though. Here we're looking at red maple, a native tree here, where we herbicided, where we treated, we have a relatively high abundance of those trees. Where we didn't treat, we have a relatively lower number of those natives. We also, um, do a good job, or at least a, a decent job, attacking the non-natives. So here we go. Here's our untreated area. The abundance of, in this case, tallow continuing to grow, continuing to grow, continuing to grow. Where we've herbicided, we haven't eliminated the invasives, but we have kept them relatively in check. So we have a quite different system in, in 2016 or 2018, for example, um, compared to if we had not treated the site. Lastly, this is a bit complicated though. So we've, this is the number of treatments that we've uh, applied to the particular site. So when we do a treatment, the abundance goes down. But what we see is over time, while we do one treatment, two treatment, three treatment, four treatment, we still have a lower abundance overall than before we started treating, but we see the biggest bang for the buck in that very first treatment. So it's important to treat early and often, and it's important to maintain this treatment, but you have to realize that we don't always get the same intensity of control as we move on into the future. We're looking forward to discovering all kinds of new crazy things in these forests, and we are really stoked to be a part of this really important effort. Thanks so much.